Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Friday, July 5th, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Jeremiah chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to 5. And it says, They say, If a man put away his wife, and she go from him, and become another man's wife, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me said the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lain with, in the ways as thou sat for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Therefore the showers have been withholden, and there had been no lot of rain, and thou hast a whore's forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me, My father, thou art the guide of my youth. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep to it will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil thing as thou couldest. Amen. We give God thanks for his words this morning. And this is a lot for us to take in. A lot. Now the question is asked, if a man should put away his wife and she becomes another man's wife again, shall not that land be polluted? Is that good? What will be the result of that or such an action? But here the Bible is saying that we as God's people, we have played the harlot. Uh-huh. And that's a strong term of word to use to describe the people of God. But it seems to fit the description because we seems can't to make up our mind about if we are for God, if we are his bride or not. We seems to be all over the place. We are here, there and everywhere. We have no abiding city. And so we are just laying ourselves careless. We refuse to be loyal to God. And so we have one foot in and one foot out. But we realize that this kind of behavior is a very shameful behavior. And it's also a degrading behavior. Because think about it. If you have a spouse that is constantly breaking that marital vow, would that be a spouse that you want to be associated with? She would be looked down on because what she's doing or what he is doing is something that is wrong and very degrading. Uh huh. And so therefore, here God is saying that, look here, the people who are supposed to be my people, this people, they have polluted the land with this practice of whoredom. And it is not talking about sexual sexuality right now. It is talking about the amount of idolatry that is taking place. Because when the Bible speaks about these things in this context, it is talking about worship or idol worship versus worshiping God. So they are whoring after other gods. They are serving other gods. And at the same time, they want to be identified with God. But that cannot be. You are either with God or against God. Now, what is it that you and I are whoring after? What it is that is pulling our attention away from God, pulling us away from Him? What is causing us to break our covenant relationship with God? What kind of whoredom are we practicing? What kind of idol are we serving? What kind of wickedness are we practicing? what it is that we are doing because whatever it is that we are doing we are only standing in the way of our blessing because we can see in the reading here because of what the children of israel were doing they have withheld by their practices the showers that should have been poured out on them in the latter rain. And we oftentimes speak about the latter rain and the former rain. Now we believe that the latter rain will be poured out in copious showers in the last days. But the question I want to ask us today is that 
Are we prepared to receive that latter rain? Are you and I faithful to God? Because the only way for you and I to receive that latter rain and to receive that showers of blessing and the power and the outpouring of the Spirit in our life that will empower us to advance the work of God, we have to remain in the covenantal relationship with God that we said that we would commit to when we first give our lives to him and so we cannot be dabbling in this doctrine that doctrine this that and we all over the place we are lusting after the world the world and the things of the world and we have no time for god and we have no time to 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 stick with God because what either God is not doing this or is not doing that we find all kind of excuse we cannot be doing that because we won't receive this rain and whatever form that latter rain will take we won't receive it huh we are only proving ourselves to be a disgrace when we behave so unrighteously and ungodly and unfaithful it sounds very harsh but it's true it's true there's none of us in our right mind if we have a spouse that behave so badly in marriage whether they go there and they have extramarital affair or they do things that will tear down the marriage or whatever it is there's no one in their right mind who would feel comfortable or happy with that so why is it that we think that god would somehow be okay with our practices that are not in alignment with his will where do we get that reasoning from i don't understand that's not a fair reasoning if we ourselves are not willing to accept that we can't expect God to accept that. And the question is asked, will thou not cry unto him? Will thou not cry to God? Ask him, be my guide. So be my guide. From Be my guide and the guide of my youth. Hmm? Will we not cry unto God? Ask him to be our guide. And especially when we are young, we need to teach our children to seek after God so that they can grow up into him and walk in his righteousness so the devil won't be able to snatch them. And the question is asked again, do you believe that he will reserve his anger forever? Do you believe that God is going to continue and watch us behave the way we behave, continue to form the fool, and he will not do anything about it? Hmm? Will he wait until the end of the end to, uh, to punish us? And so, because we believe that he will not punish us now, and he will wait until the end, does that mean that we will continue to do all manner of evil that we want to do? Something for us to think about. And I say it to us this morning that the answer is no. No, God's anger will not be quenched forever. He will not stay silent forever. One day is gonna pull that cap and when that cap is pulled, it's gonna be an unbearable experience. We won't be able to contend with it. And so it is important for us to decide now while he's calling and beckoning to us, repent, turn away from the things that we are doing and turn to God so that what? He can save us from our sins, save us from ourselves, put away our idols, put away the false gods, give God what is due to him, give him our worship and our loyalty because only he alone deserve all these things because he is God, creator of the universe, savior and king and without him none of us would, have, would be alive today to be treating him the way we do sometimes and i pray this morning may we take heed may we listen to the voice and the pleading of the holy spirit may we turn away from our backsliding may we turn away from the things that we are doing wrong and turn to god so that he can save us and so that we won't be recipients of his wrath and i say amen